thank you so thank you sir so thank you so much for uh, for giving me this opportunity we had a wonderful session or ab mera khayal hai we will at least for next 6 months heart failure bhulega nahi hame so we haven't left anything i think so so coming back to this topic uh so coming from so from so electro physiologist perspective i will be presenting an additional tool which is which was available and which is available and which will be available in the future with great expertise so the data will be from all these three hospitals which i have been working and now work now so the task which has been given to me is to talk about how to deal with the scar targeted vt ablation and the the reason this is this is has come up or has been coming up for quite some time now is that the the more better the treatment options we have the more lives we are saving the more interventions we are doing we as a result do produced some focuses in the heart and which can result in particularly in this aspect of management so by definition ischemic ventricular tachycardia is a sustained or non sustained arrhythmia that arises due to a electrical reentry and this is almost always within myocardial scars and always due to previous myocardial infarctions the characteristics of are usually a monomorphic qrs complex uh, versus a polymorphic vt which which do not have or may not have a single focus so with this one we may get a single focus sometime so this is just my data or the data i would say roughly in across the country as you can see the usual ablations we have been doing are the outflow vts with very tremendous uh, success fascicular vts arvc some of them ischemic vts hardly 3% not because that maybe we do not have the expertise but then there are some other problems in it of not of us not doing more in numbers i'll come to that later on so i'll 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 elaborate my presentation with two scenarios so this is scenario number 1 so it's a typical scenario as you can see a 55 year old male had a previous mi interior mi had later on became cardiomyopathic ejection fraction dropping and eventually he was placed with an icd for secondary prevention now lately he he had complaints of shock from his icd and the symptoms were palpitation with sweating and chest heaviness so one or time dizziness and near syncope otherwise shortness of breath on exertion so when the device when so we, so once we have a device we are lucky to to actually get in, interrogated and uh, know the a, a lot about the arrhythmia so on device interrogation it was shown that he was having vts same morphology across all episode monomorphic vt rate 150 to 160 now there is an option in the icd which uh, which gives us the extra tool to give anti tachycardia pacing and shock therapy now anti tachycardia pacing is a gentle therapy shock therapy is a more uh, heavier punch but this particular patient despite multiple uh, despite these anti tachycardia and shocks he would still come in uh, vt and would have icd shocks now in terms of medication and this is very important to understand that he was already on on a good med, a good dose of medication which is a beta blocker a cardio selective beta blocker and one of the best anti arrhythmic available in the country which is cardron but the issue was still recurrent vt despite good use of anti arrhythmic and above all I, i think most of you know a patient receiving shocks has a very poor quality of life becomes miserable 
so the bottom line sort of drug refractory multiple icd therapies and poor quality of life so so what did we do so have a look at this ecg it's a classic vt ecg the right bundle atypical right bundle v1 reflects that it is from the lv the all the qss tells us that's a big scar in the anterior part of the lv the monomorphicity tells that that it is likely scar mediated so generally electrophysiologist do know just by have a look at this ecg there where could be the exact scar its exit site and its isthmus because these are the two sites where successful ablation can obviate the problem so so what we did was so this is an icd that's the coronary sinus catheter that's a diagnostic catheter that's catheter is in rv that's the icd lead so this was a diagnostic study first then considering that his arrhythmia was coming from the lv so we thought it is better to have a transeptal approach so we did a transeptal puncture and the assembly would all go through the mitral uh, uh, valve into the lv so all the so two diagnostic catheters the icd lead and the transeptal assembly uh use of this catheter it is a sort of a multipolar catheter which has got four phalanges and it got multiple electrodes on top of it now that this is the expanded form this is lv this is mapping in lv and luckily we have a mapping system over there it's called a 3d mapping system the beauty of it is that this uh, with this catheter that it acquires the images very fastly and as it acquires the images it is also spreading out the colors the co the color scheme basically is uh, operator selective and it depends on the health of a myocardial signal so generally a red a red area or sometimes a white area would denote an area of low voltage signals or a scar so now the same mechanism the diagnostic catheter is out and an ablation catheter has been introduced it's a busy slide i had to get all these things together just for the benefit of you people so you can see that was the mapping system there was the earlier angiogram and echo that's the in, that's the electrophysiological signals of an ep machine and this was the site of the earliest ablation and we managed to get him in sinus rhythm and and remember this patient was not ablated in vt it was he was ablated in sinus rhythm and that's why it is called substrate modification so this is the same ablation catheter and the red area denotes the area of the scar and uh, and the ablations as well so this is just for comparison you can see the pre procedure scg and the post procedure and the qs complexes in the anterior so we managed to get one of its uh, arrhythmia substrate so this is the second scenario this was another gentleman he had a disease before and uh, a lot of problem but he was doing generally well uh, overall he was progressing well good quality of life and so on until he developed a very slow onset onset vt this one now this this was so resilient we could not overdrive it we could not shock the device would not shock it because the cycle length was not the shockable cycle length overdrive pace would not work anti arrhythmics we tried our best so eventually it was decided to to try and ablate this uh, scar related vt so what we did was so these are again the two uh, the the icd lead this is a diagnostic uh, this is rv catheter the diagnostic ep catheter and this is another basket catheter which is collecting signals from the rv so we map the right ventricle first thinking that these that the origin may be in the right ventricle uh very soon we realized that uh, the focus is not in the right ventricle so we decided to go into the epicardial space so this is an epicardial needle 
epic the wire this assembly is the ablation catheter now these are again the three dimensional images uh, first of the rv and then of the uh, lv this is a difficult to understand slide but the color color helps an electrophysiologist pre ablation and post ablation and the the area in between is generally the area where which is area of slow conduction or the one we have ablated and eventually as you can see this is epicardial space that's the ablation catheter right up in the epicardial space and this was the site where this slow vt was ablated a classic scar related vt and uh, since then it is 4 to 5 years now if i remember correctly and this patient he hasn't suffered a vt again so in the end what i said in the in the in the first instance why don't we do it why do you, why don't we do it quite often there are many reasons a most of these ischemic vts are usually hemodynamically non stable now usually hemodynamically non stable vt you you can take them on to the cath lab table but then you need you need a multiple of assistance so you need an intraortic balloon pump you need the anesthetic support you need a lot of strong team around and then you try and try because during during the ablation you are doing the procedure he will go into vt vt hemodynamic compromise it will be difficult so of the ischemic vts we generally tend to pick those vts which are hemodynamically tolerable so once they are hemodynamically tolerable they give us time to map and ablate on top of that there is a lot of work in uh, done in the world which 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 do another method of ablation which is called scar modified ablation so we we also we can do that in the second case i did a scar one so we don't need to in, uh, induce the vt identify the scar then ablate it and in the hope that you have modified the substrate with this i thank you all